Hello, it's Dr. Rhonda Johnson. Today is Saturday, February 6, 2021. And today I'm going to be talking about vaccine-induced immunity versus natural immunity to the coronavirus. But first, I want to start off with some good news. Well, sort of good news. Our daily average of COVID-19 cases this past week was only around 172,000 plus. But this was a 31% decrease from where we were two weeks ago. Sadly, there's still around 110,000 people in hospitals across the United States. And even more sadly, there were over 21,000 people who lost their lives last week. But this week, we saw a million doses on average of shots in the arm across the United States. So experts believe that this past week was the first week since the fall peak of October that we're starting to see a decline in this, in this current wave of this pandemic. So I hope that we will continue to see progress uh, with this virus. I hope folks will continue to stay the course no matter how challenging this is, as we embark upon a mass vaccination effort to uh, reduce our susceptibility to this virus. Which leads me to the talk today. I did a number of conversations this past week with different organizations. And one uh, thing I repeatedly heard, sort of like an argument against getting the COVID-19 vaccine, it went like this. Well, if I get the disease, I'll build a stronger immune response in my body because I'll have natural immunity versus if I get the shot, then I might only have immunity that lasts for a little while. So let's go over some basic fundamentals here. Immunity means basically the process by which our immune system protects us from infection. Generally, we like to think about antibody immunity. Natural immunity refers to what happens after you get sick and produce natural antibodies. Vaccine-induced immunity refers to the antibodies your body produces after getting any type of vaccine. Now, the difference with COVID-19 is with natural immunity, you have to get sick from COVID-19, and some folks may not survive. So that's not the safest way to build immunity to this virus. COVID-19 vaccine immunity allows your immune system to learn how to protect you without you actually getting sick. Now, what do we know about immunity after natural infection or even after vaccine-induced immunity. Let's talk about natural immunity first. Well, how long will these antibodies last after people recover from COVID-19? We don't know. The virus hasn't been around long enough to know for certain. But one thing we do know, we have seen people get reinfected with COVID-19. Now, this may be due to infection with another variant, We'll be able to sort this out as time goes on. But the body does produce antibodies after infection, but that's about all we know. Now, how about vaccine-induced immunity? How long do the antibodies last after the vaccine? Well, once again, the answer is similar. We don't know, folks. We just don't know yet because it hasn't been enough time. What we do know is that from historical experience with other vaccines, that not all vaccines are equal and how long their protection lasts. So for example, the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, the MMR, folks who were born after 1977 have received this vaccine. We know that if they get two doses, the immunity appears to be lifelong. But other vaccines like the flu shot, you have to get vaccinated every year. And then there are some vaccines like the tetanus diphtheria pertussis shot that are somewhere in the middle of the pack. As an adult, you know, we have to get tetanus boosters every 10 years. 
So what we do know about this COVID-19 vaccine induced immunity is that you need to get both shots of the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine to be fully protected. Now the Johnson and Johnson vaccine that should come out in March, you only need one shot. And that protection uh, seems to be very good against getting severe disease or reducing hospitalizations. Now, some experts believe that the COVID-19 vaccines will provide long-lasting immunity. But other experts believe that the immunity is going to wear off relatively quickly and will need a booster shot every year. Only time is going to tell. Because, folks, we've got this thing going on called the variants. And as long as this virus keeps replicating and mutating and producing new types of viruses, it's hard to know what's going to happen with the immunity. So far, we know from the experts that the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines offer long-term protection against the UK virus variant. This may not be true for the South African and Brazil variants. And folks, there will be a whole lot more variants. And, you know, if you've had COVID-19 and recovered, you might not be immune to these new variants. Researchers just don't know for sure, but they're on the lookout. So the bottom line is, I think we have a lot more questions than we have answers because COVID-19 has only been around for a little more than a year. There's still a lot that we don't know. There's still a lot that we have to learn. But the good news is that there's a whole lot of research going on. For now, we still have to continue our physical distancing, mask wearing, good hand washing, and as primary prevention. And we do know that we can get the vaccine. For the Moderna and the Pfizer, we need the two shots to be fully protected. And once the J&J vaccine, the Johnson & Johnson, comes out, it'll be a single-dose vaccine. So there's progress. When we look back to where we started almost a year ago here in this country, many of our lives have changed a lot. But we have adapted, and I know that we'll continue to adapt as we learn to live with this coronavirus. So that's my message for today. Uh, My views are my own. My only intent is to help break things down that could otherwise be complicated and make it simple and plain. I hope that you stay safe. And folks, I hope that you have a blessed day. Until next time.